Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Color Sync. So I wanted to talk about a specific important topic that I think a lot of other people need to hear. And that is so many vegans, including myself when I used to be a vegan, that started to deteriorate massively on a vegan diet where it wasn't working for me whatsoever and made me deteriorate and had such a negative effect on my digestion and induced so many health issues and symptoms within me we start to feel really bad about going back to eating meat. And I've seen this with so many other people as well, but I'm gonna talk predominantly about my own personal experience. So I was vegan for around six years, and I started to realize that I needed certain animal foods such as meat and fish to actually give me the nutrients I've been lacking for so long on a vegan diet to resolve all of my health issues symptoms once and for all, and so I could feel the best every single day and actually thrive rather than just survive. So when I decided to make the switch, oh my God, mentally it was so hard because I've been programmed and brainwashed by other vegan dogmatic people out there where they tell you that a vegan diet is the only compassionate diet that doesn't actually harm animals at all. And then you watch documentaries such as Cowspiracy and other documentaries where they show you factory farming and what is done to animals for them then to give us these animal-based foods on our plate that are sold in the stores that we buy. So when you look at this type of stuff, it really has an effect on you because we are emotional beings. And this is where they know that they can affect most people with working on our emotional body. So it worked for me many years ago. And that was one of the main reasons that I stuck to a vegan diet. I first got into it for health reasons, but then I started to binge on animal foods here and here and here. But I got to a point where I said to myself, well, it's okay if I want to harm myself with those foods because I thought they were bad for me at the time that necessary it wasn't true at all. But harming animals, that's just not okay. It's okay if I want to destroy my body, but it's not okay to destroy animals in the process. So that's what made me stick on a diet, which is a vegan diet, for around six years. So when I started to contemplate eating meat, I felt so bad about it. And it actually took me weeks to actually get around to eating some meat. And if you didn't see the video where I ate meat for the first time on camera, because I'm a very transparent person, unlike a lot of people out there such as Raw Vanna that actually got caught on camera sneakily eating fish and she'd been hiding that she'd been eating animal foods for so long. So yeah, if you wanna see a transparent ex-vegan eat meat for the first time, I put a link for the video up above. And once I actually got round to eating it, and I got rid of some of the programming and brainwashing, I felt fine with eating the meat. And I got so many amazing, profound benefits from it so fast, because I was finally getting the nutrients I've been lacking for years and years and years on that stupid, malnourishing, vegan diet. And because I felt so good from it, it then made me drawn to eat more and more and more. If I felt really bad from it, then I probably wouldn't have been drawn to eating it because it could have been a sign to me, at least from my own personal experience, that it wasn't for me, well, at least right for me. So then over weeks and weeks and weeks, leading up to the point now where I'm about 45 days into eating an animal-based diet that is normally predominantly a carnivore-based diet, I'm not 100% carnivore, but the majority of the time I'm eating meat on its own, maybe with some salt or some pepper, but then there's other things that I eat as well, so it doesn't make me a strict 100% carnivore. And what I would say is probably for around the first two weeks or so, there was many times where I started to question what I was doing because all of a sudden, I would start to feel bad about eating animals and them having their lives ended for them to then provide their meat and also fish to be put on my plate. And all these emotions would come up and I feel really upset and I start to feel really depressed and down and I start to feel really bad that I was paying for these foods and for me to eat them. And it was like this battle with this programming still going on. And it was really, really hard for me. And I know so many other people that are going through this as well. I've had some family members switch and they've had the same experience as well. Especially when you're someone that has such an emotional attachment to these sentient animal beings that do actually want to live. But I just kept going and going and going. And certain times I thought, well, maybe I can make the plant-based diet. Maybe I can move to this country so I can get high quality foods. Maybe I could grow my own foods. Maybe I'll just eat all organic foods. Maybe I'll do this and that and that. And then I watched two specific videos. One was by Bobby's Perspective. Another one was by a girl, which I can't remember the name of, but I put links down below for both of them. 
And once I listened to them, they went through the same experience as well. And they shared what they did to get through it. And they shared a lot of truths on certain things about why it's not a bad thing to eat meat and you don't need to feel bad about it. And I highly recommend you go and watch these videos. These were game changers for me and they just helped me to realize I don't need to feel bad about eating meat whatsoever. We are designed for meat. We've been eating it for millions of years. I definitely believe this food was a part of our own human evolution where it was something that helped us evolve to the point where we're at now. And it has so many different nutrients in that is key for us to thrive and to feel the best every single day and for the rest of our lives. And guess what? We would have them in our natural environment. If you're living out in the jungle or in the forest, there'd be times where you would need to end an animal's life. It's as simple as that. And you would eat it. Look at tribal people. Even look at the world's longest living civilizations in the blue zones that have the most centurions in the world. They all eat animal foods. It is something that we need. And this is why plant-based diets don't work over a long period of time. And there's a lot of vegans that say, well, I'm thriving and I've got the blood work to say that I'm thriving. But to be honest, I thought I was thriving the majority of the time on a vegan diet. But once I started eating animal foods and I started feeling the best that I'd ever felt in my life, I was at a point where I had something to compare when I felt the best on a vegan diet and me feeling the best on this carnival-based diet. And I could reflect upon it and see that when I thought I was feeling the best, I actually wasn't compared to how I am on this carnivore-based diet. So everything is all relative. And guess what? So many of these vegans that say they're thriving, have they actually tried switching to a diet like what I'm eating so they can actually compare? No, pretty much none of them, except for the people that are ex-vegans. And all of these ex-vegans seem to say time and time again, including myself, no way would I ever go back to a plant-based diet. It didn't work for me. I tried it for years and years and years, tried so many different things to make it work, and it made me suffer. And because we feel so good on these animal-based foods, why would we stop? It would just make no sense at all. It'd be absolutely insane. Unlike certain people like Vegetable Police, but we know he's just an entertainer. And I know when he was in Thailand, he was sourcing a lot of factory farmed animal foods and a lot of the lowest quality meats. Unlike me, who's getting the highest quality pasture-raised, grass-fed, organic, free-range, antibiotic-free, hormone-free meats and wild-caught fish and other high-quality animal foods that are just the most nutrient-dense and the cleanest possible. So yeah, anyone who wants to bring up Vegetable Police, man, he just does so well from making entertaining videos on his diet and switching from this diet and this one and that one and that one and that one. He's all over the place. He's making a lot of money from what he's doing. Why would he stop doing that? I think he just loves to provide people with some entertaining content. And I think he has some psychosomatic things going on that he needs to address. But that's our other story for another video. Let's get back on to the topic. So yeah, this is what kept happening with me and this whole experience. And then watching those two videos and then eating this diet for a longer period of time where I've been doing it for almost 45 days now. Guess what? I don't feel bad at all anymore because I've moved through the process that I needed to go through and I listened to so much information from other people that eat animal-based diets and see that they're thriving. And I started to just eliminate a lot of the programming by listening to other people that are not on a vegan diet anymore and getting rid of all of that brainwashing and all the ideologies that were programmed within me and all of the dogma as well from all of these vegan preachers out there that are trying to promote this vegan agenda and they push so much pseudoscience. And guess what? So many of them look like absolute garbage, such as Vegan Games, which I talked about not long ago. Oh my God, he's one of the most unhealthiest like vegans that is not thriving and is just surviving. And a lot of people listen to him for health advice. Yeah, he looks like crap. He's not functioning to the best of his ability. Why would you listen to anyone like that? It doesn't make any sense to me. But I guess a lot of people are just not that switched on. And when you think about it, does a carnivore in its natural environment, such as a lion, feel bad when it's hunting down an animal and eating it whilst it is alive? No, not whatsoever. Neither do any other carnivores out there or omnivores for that fact. So why should we feel bad? If you're eating it when you don't actually need it, then yeah, I don't think that's the best thing to be doing. But if you actually need it like I did and so many other people, so we can just 
have the best human experience possible and not have gas and bloating or diarrhea or constipation or our mind being all over the place and being so emotionally imbalanced and overwhelmed and stressed out because the vegan diet's just messing us up like crazy and throwing everything out of whack. So like, pfft, yeah, just eat the meat. Get your head around it. And what I would say is from my own personal experience, it was best for me to try certain foods that used to appeal to me when I used to eat meat. So I first started off with a burger. That was easier for me. I thought about eating steak on its own. I was just like, no, I can't do this. So I ate those a couple of times. And then I just started to naturally feel drawn to eating things such as steak and mince on its own and other certain animal foods where it doesn't have to be all dressed up to look like something that it necessarily isn't and trying to trick yourself into it. But it's good to trick yourself at first. And even when I started eating eggs, I first put them in pancakes at first because trying to eat eggs on its own, I just couldn't do it. It was just so hard for me mentally. But once I'd actually tried them in pancakes, then I felt I could eat them on their own. I found a way that I like to cook them so they're appealing to me. So just be easy on yourself. And I would say, just start off with small amounts, get around it mentally, get used to eating these types of foods and just keep pushing forward and being consistent with it and you will get over it in the end. It may be challenging at first for you emotionally, but you can get over it because if I can, you can too. But make sure that you're always eating the highest quality animal foods because a lot of people do not get the greatest benefits when switching back to animal foods because they're in low quality factory farmed animal food sources that is really high in omega-6, low in omega-3, which can cause chronic inflammation throughout the whole body, which is the root cause of pretty much every health issue and symptom out there. And it's just not as nutrient dense in all vitamins and minerals and other nutrients as well. And if you're someone that's in Thailand like me, check out paleorobby.com. They can deliver all this type of produce to your door. It is the best that you can pretty much source of the foods that I've just mentioned. There'll be a coupon code down below as well for 500 baht off on your first order if you spend over 2,000 baht. But if you're someone that's not in Thailand, do as much research as you can to source some high quality animal foods. There's so many delivery companies all around the world, or you might be able to go to your local farmer or find somewhere else locally, such as your local grocery store, and find the highest quality animal foods that you need so you can feel the best. And remember, it's always about putting the best fuel in your body if you want to feel your best. So that's it from me in this video. Leave your questions down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. Make sure you click the bell notification button next to that subscribe button. Otherwise, you will not be notified of when those new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming every single day. So as always, stay happy, stay healthy and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.